We've, we've got a car collision, car A and car B. I want to give you some of the properties of these cars at the time of the collision. Just to, car A and car B are in a car accident. Well, hopefully. Okay. So I've got this mass A, which is going to be car A. It's got a mass of, nice round numbers, 1,500 kilograms. And let's let all of the digits be significant. So four sig figs there. And let's make the car B be an identical car just to make our jobs a little bit easier this time. Now, recognizing that's a very special case that you have two cars that are identical get into a car accident. Okay, but possible. Maybe coming out of the, the lot, the, the new car lot. Unless they're identical driven cars. by yeah driven by, by twins with the exact same amount of gas. Maybe they have okay. Cars. Anyway. Why well, really fat that differentiates the difference? Why does everybody have to be really fat in your scenarios? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? That's fat. like your defi the, the that's the defining feature of your your problems. <laughs> Are the cars masses one fifty or fifteen hundred? All right. Let's co it continue with the story. Nobody was injured in this car accident that never happened. So we've got this velocity that's going at 13 meters per second to the east. Okay? 13 meters per second to the east. Let's say, uh, hmm. Let's, let's say that we don't really know the velocity of B. We don't actually know. Okay? Can we find B? Well, What, what, what if this person claimed, this person here, B, B's the ones that, that may be at fault here, but let's say that the person claimed that their velocity was only five meters per second. Is that reasonable? So it's really not their speed, they're claiming. Oh, let's, let's, let's make it a little faster than that. Let's, let's see if they, so wait, so what happens. <laughs> let's see if the, what happens if they claim that they're going at 11.33 meters per second. Let's, let's make it even more outrageous. They claim that they're going at 11.33 meters per second. Yeah, like, who? Well, let's see. If they claim that they're going 11.33 meters per second, we're not sure because the cop only had the speed radar pointed at car A, but person B claims they're going 11.33 meters per second. Now, the car accident went like this. These two cars ended up sort of crumpled and, and mashed together, and they went off at an angle together, stuck together, Okay, stuck together at some angle relative to uh, to the east, 55 degrees. Okay, it went off at 55 degrees. Let's talk about momentum x initial. What's the initial momentum <clears throat> for this collision? Yeah. Yeah, just due to the A, right? So you might say that it's MAVAX plus MBVBX, but we know that the, the uh, car B isn't traveling in the X direction at all, so that zero is out. So it would be mass A, which is 1,500 kilograms, times VA, which is 13 meters per second. And somebody that's quick on the draw with the calculator, what's 1,500 times 13? That sounds right. 19,500. 19,500 kilogram meters per second. Yeah, inelastic collision. So we add the masses and then we get to the Well, let's see. That's what's happening in the x direction. What should px prime be? Whether it's inelastic or not. Yeah. Wait, wouldn't it just be the x, the x component of the, the 55 degrees minus the two masses? Well, let's. Does, does the x component of momentum get conserved according to what we said previously? Yes. Correct. Yeah, so shouldn't it be the same after as it is before? Yes. Okay, well, let's just say that then. Yeah. Isn't it going to be different if the two masses are as one? 
Well, not according to the conservation of momentum yeah, theory the law or law. Too, right? Okay. That's only the x component. Yeah, it's just the x component. All right, so let's talk about the y component according to what the the car claimed, car B claimed. Car B claimed that they're going at 11.33 meters per second, which is a pretty specific claim. Momentum y was equal to well, mass <coughs> a v a y plus mass b v b y. And of course, we say that v a y was equal to zero, so the momentum for object uh, a in the y direction is equal to zero, all told. Uh, so we've got mass b again, 1500 kilograms, because it's uh, almost mystically the same mass as the other one, times v b y. We say that this person claims that they're going at 11.33 meters per second. I should have said north. 16,000, what's that? 16,995 kilograms yeah. per second. Kilogram meters per second, okay. And so according to the conservation of momentum, PY should be equal to PY primed. Conservation's uh, momentum is conserved in the <coughs> Y direction. What's that? Oh, do you want to define what's positive and what's the negative direction? Can we make north and east positive? That sounds reasonable. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't define that. You're right. Okay. North is positive, east is positive. Yeah. So we've got our reference frame. Now we've got PY prime. How could I check to see if the person driving car B was telling the truth? What do you say? Find the y component of that angle? Yeah. How could I do that? Yeah? What speed were they going when Well, we don't know that there's speed when they, after the collision. We don't know the speed after the collision. That's something we don't know. Yep? Yeah. Oh, see, so uh, trade volume and find momentum. You don't have any side lengths, though. What's that? You could find the momentum of the hypotenuse? Yeah. Let's see about that. Sure. What, I think what Tyler's saying is that if we knew px prime and we knew py prime, then we could figure out what p primed is. And if we knew what p primed is, wouldn't p primed go in the same direction as the final velocity? Yes, which means it should have an angle. Yeah, that makes sense. So that angle there should be 55 degrees. I think that's some pretty sound thinking. If we know px primed, which we do, and we know py primed, which we do, if the guy is telling the truth, then we should be able to figure out this angle here and check to see if it matches with what maybe an insurance adjuster found at the scene of the crime or a police officer found at the scene of the crime and then maybe we can prosecute or not prosecute the person accordingly, okay? So let's see if we can figure out this theta, what this theta value is if the person's telling the truth. I'll let you guys jump ahead, do the trig. Obviously, if we know an opposite and adjacent, which trig ratio is it gonna be? Tan, 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 opposite and adjacent, toa. Well, let's find out. I want to know what it really is. What's tan inverse of one thousand? Oh, sorry, sixteen thousand nine hundred ninety-five divided by. 19,500. Say again. Oh, maybe I'll stop there with a the sig fix then. Um, degrees. So the angle is less than 55 degrees. This person was lying. Uh oh. Is it uh oh or is it oh? Uh, who cares? Let's see. If this angle here, this angle here, is less than what the cops or the insurance adjusters found, is the person lying to protect themselves or have they overestimated them their speed? Let's see. If if it was a bigger angle, what would have to be true about this momentum? Wouldn't it have to be bigger? Tyler, you're wrong. 
if it was this angle, 55 degrees, which is bigger than this angle, was his momentum actually bigger or actually smaller? Actually bigger. Dirty, dirty liar. Hey. <laughs> What's wrong with you? No abuse in the physics room. All right, so here's what I want to do. I want to see if we can figure out, as insurance adjusters, let's see if we can figure out how fast this person really was going. And then we'll check to see if they were breaking the speed limit, OK? How could you find out? Shh. Let's take a look at this P primed issue here. Let's see what, it, what the person's momentum actually was. I know for a fact that this is 55 degrees. And I know that Px prime should be conserved. And according to our earlier calculations, Px prime, guys, can I ask you to stop the back of the room table talk? Thank you. We know from previous and conservation of momentum that we know the Px prime. Which trig ratio would let me find Py prime? Yeah. Oh, um, you could still use, why would you, you could still use uh, tan. tan theta equals opposite of Yeah, I like that. So I could say tan of theta is equal to opposite is py primed again over px primed. And rearranging, you get theta being tan inverse. This is going really fast. Well, let's you know, see. Right? py primed over px primed. Oh, did I, did I make a mistake there? Oh, I, I isolated for the wrong variable. I'm sorry. Um, Py primed is equal to Px primed times tan of theta. And Px primed was 19,500 kilogram meters per second times tan of 55 degrees. Make sure that your calculators are on uh, degrees mode, not radian mode. I think there's 27,848 27, kilogram meters per second. Now that's the y component of, mom of momentum after. Doesn't that mean it's also the y momentum before? Okay, so we could say py before, py without a prime, is also 27,848 kilogram meters per second. And I suppose if we go back to our original scenario where initially car B was going north and car A was going east. Who is supplying all the Y momentum? <laughs> B, okay. So let's say that this PY must just be equal to mass B times VBY initial, okay? And if we get VBY initial by itself, we can figure out how fast this, this puppy was going beforehand. And my, my notation is getting bad here, but I'm running out of space. Kilograms cancel out. We're just left with meters per second. What's the velocity of, of the fellow before the crash? Daniel? 18.57 meters per second. 18.57 meters per second. Boy, so this, this guy was lying, like I think 11.3 meters per second, that's pretty fast. But 18.57 meters per second, that is way off of his estimate. Let's figure out, because nobody tells you meters per second when they're driving. What's that in kilometers per hour? Somebody do a quick conversion for me. What is it? 67 kilometers per hour if we do the quick conversion. 67 kilometers per hour. Now that's not even so crazy, but what if this was in a, if this was at a highway off ramp, not so big a deal. If it's in a school zone though, yeah, we got some other problems, okay? So if this person has their accident analyzed later on by some insurance adjuster or police officer, because hey, you would figure that they would have these basic skills that a grade 12 student would have, possibly, right? You could check to see, is Buddy lying? And even if the person's not lying, maybe they're just mistaken, it doesn't matter. What's done is done, right? Okay, this is a, this is a pretty nice little analysis.